A very good morning. Thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Wogan's European Outlook, uh, the 9th of March. This is how March is looking so far, largely below normal across the UK and Ireland, Spain, Portugal, Central and Southeastern portions of Europe. And uh, this is how the upcoming five-day period is looking off the model. This is actually the CFSV control run I want to show you today because we'll look at the extended range. Of course, you take that with a pinch of salt, uh, given what uh, we've seen this winter versus the forecast I had. You take it with even more of a pinch of salt. But, uh, you know, I've already explained my ideas towards the end of March and April. I'm co going for the cold and normal theme and, uh, you know, I do believe that the stratospheric warming that we've seen ongoing will continue to see uh, over the next couple of weeks. I think it will have influence, hopefully, with the pattern towards the end of March uh, into early April. And, of course, gas prices continue to rise. 40% uh, of the, the European um, network is dependent on Russia. And, of course, this is not a good uh, outlook as we go forward here cold and normal from germany eastwards over the next five days and that will cause more strain on the power situation here prices of course shot through the roof roof in the uk as well and uh, you know you know it, it just it costs a fortune to run run your heat at the moment uh, you don't need me to tell you that um, on here but uh, it's interesting to see here this model in particular indicating that we see the continuation of cold uh, even in the five to ten day period uh, ukraine balkans turkey a uh, continued dire situation in in, in ukraine of course uh, the temperature probably not get much more or less above freezing over the next couple of days in kiev or kiev and uh, by nighttime temperatures could drop close to minus 10 so uh, not good um, by any stretch. And in fact, without even Russian influence, the situation that we've got at the moment could end up killing people in terms of uh, of cold. So um, not good, but uh, I think it's something that needs to be addressed as well. A lot of attention being brought on the attack from the Russians, but the weather is even having an attack on the people as well. So uh, I kind of double whammy, if you will, for the 44 million people of course there's not 44 million people at the moment living in ukraine there's many people now fled the country but they're probably uh, you know in countries adjacent to, to ukraine that is cold hopefully will have power to keep people warm at least but the uh, upcoming five days and the upcoming 10 days really cold and normal across the southeast warmer than normal across the uk and northern europe gets interesting as we go towards the latter half of the month here as you can start to see the pattern changes and they uh, actually considerably below normal temperatures prevail across the southwestern portion of europe and central areas as we go between the period of the 20th of march and the 2nd of april and it looks as if this model in particular holds on to that cold theme through at least the first half of april which is quite interesting and i think Possibly this model is seeing what is going on within the stratosphere. We're seeing the continuation of warmth at 10 HPA, but even further down through to 50 HPA, PA, you can see the influence starting to take hold. And this is the important thing, transfer of energy from top down. You can see here as I play through the loop, uh, throughout the middle portion of the month, the warming eases for a time, but then it starts to come back once again, if you notice. And the second wave of warmth, as you can see here, takes hold, crosses over the top of the pole, deflects the, the vortex uh, eastwards. And that could be the final blow, I think, to this vortex, that secondary wave of, of warmth across the top. And you can see here it kind of really washes out the vortex as we go towards the end of the month. And I do believe this will shape a cold and normal uh, month of August here. This is the 50 HPA temperature profile, by the way, as we go uh, through. This is the current one, and you can actually see uh, still a vortex present over the Asian side of the pole. We're seeing warming across the northern portion of North America. And if we go out to um, a week from now, um, you can see here at 50 HPA, the warming kind of taking place. That looks to me like it would 
possibly initiate uh, a West-based uh, negative NAO, which of course would uh, correlate to colder across Eastern North America and uh, Western Europe here, and that would coincide well with what with what the CFSV two control is showing here. So um, you know, we are warming up, but it looks as if we could start to see uh, the cooling towards the end of the month here. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, certainly, if we, you know, we've had the the first eight days of the month below normal, we get some warming during the middle portion of the month, and then if we do get the foot, say the end of the the month of 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 March below normal, we could see at or slightly below average temperatures for March, which actually would uh, correlate with the with my my March forecast quite nicely. And of course, like I've said. I'm going for a cold than normal April here. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. And I'll be back again hopefully tomorrow morning with more. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the like button, share and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for the notifications. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.